Hello everybody. In this video, I'll be taking you through the determining the concentration of an acid uh, report that we will be doing in LabFlow. This is going to be a titration, which is a volumetric technique, meaning that we are going to be making measurements of volume in order to figure out how many moles of our known uh, titrant we're going to add to a certain volume of our titrant, which is our unknown that's going to be down here. So we're going to have vinegar, which contains acetic acid. Uh, it's an acetic acid and water solution. Um, and we're going to add a certain volume of that and in, down into the container. And then we want, and then we're going to trickle in our known sodium hydroxide until we have the exact same number of moles uh, at, that we've added as we originally had in here. So that the moles of acid are going to equal the moles of sodium hydroxide. And to know when that occurs, we're going to add an indicator. And this is like a dye. And when the solution is acidic, it's going to be clear. Um, the dye isn't going to have any color. And once it turns basic, so right after, right when it neutralizes, it's going to turn like a pink color. And you'll see that over here. And then we're going to measure the initial volume in our burette. We're going to measure the final volume that we have after we get our pink color. And the difference between those two is going to be the volume of sodium hydroxide that we added. So our measurements that we're going to know, we're going to know our initial volume of sodium hydroxide. We'll know that final volume of sodium hydroxide. We're going to measure how much vinegar we put into the flask. And we're going to know the concentration of the sodium hydroxide. The first thing that we're going to be asked to uh, calculate here is going to be the volume of sodium hydroxide that we added. This is going to be the final volume minus the initial volume. And then we're going to do that for three trials. So we're going to repeat the experiment three times. And then we're going to take the average of that by adding the volume that we added for our three trials and then dividing by three. Then we'll calculate the average moles of sodium hydroxide that it took to titrate the vinegar solutions. We're going to take the concentration of sodium hydroxide. We're going to multiply it by that average value of volume. Remember that this concentration is molarity. It is moles per liter. Uh, so we're going to need to multiply our volume here in liters, not milliliters. And that's going to give us our moles of sodium hydroxide. Next thing they're asking for is the average moles of acetic acid. So we're going to take the moles of sodium hydroxide that we have up here, and we have to handle our stoichiometry. You know, how many moles of sodium hydroxide does it take for every mole of acetic acid? But it's just a one to one. So this one's pretty easy. This is just going to equal each other. So the moles of sodium hydroxide is going to be the same as the moles of acetic acid in this case. Next, we're going to calculate the average molarity of the acetic acid. So what is the concentration of the acetic acid uh, with the units of molarity? Again, that's going to be moles uh, per liter. So we're going to take the moles of acetic acid that we have, and we're going to divide it by the uh, volume of vinegar that we added. Uh, so this is what we just calculated, by the way. Um, and then we're going to divide it by the volume that we have, but we're going to make sure that we convert this volume to liters. Next, they ask for the average mass of acetic acid, and this is going to be the moles of acetic acid that we calculated times its molecular weight. And I went ahead and looked that up for you guys. It's 60.052 grams per mole. Next, and this one's kind of tricky, what was going to be the average mass of that vinegar? Okay, so the mass of the vinegar is going to be the volume of the vinegar times its density. 
and uh, we don't really know what the density of vinegar is but what we're going to do is we're going to assume that it's just one gram per milliliter so it has average mass similar to water next we're going to calculate a new concentration but this time we're looking for mass percent of the acetic acid this is the symbol for acetic acid in the vinegar so that mass percent is going to be our mass of acetic acid that we calculated up here divided by our mass of vinegar that we calculated there times 100 percent we're going to calculate the percent error for this uh, and so they're going to give you the theoretical value it's in like a bold statement right underneath the question and we're going to do it this just the way that we have been doing it. We're going to take the actual value, which is the percent mass over mass we just calculated, minus the theoretical they give you. We're going to take this to be a positive value, whether it is or not. Okay, so we're going to do the absolute value, and then we're going to divide that by the theoretical um, concentration. I want to give you guys a couple of hints for the post-lab questions. Uh, the first one here is asking you where you think your sources of error were in the experiment because we're not doing this in person. I'm just going to give you full credit for that so you don't have to worry about this one. And then in the next one, we're, we're, we're going to have this uh, assumption here. So suppose that the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution was 0 0.5 molar instead of 0 0.1 molar. Okay, and then it asked two questions about what would be true if it was five times more concentrated. Would this titration have required more, less, or the same amount of sodium hydroxide solution for a complete reaction? And then they ask us what, do, what effect does the concentration of base added have on the reliability of the results in your titration. <clears throat> so to answer those, I got a couple of equations here for you guys. So we know that the moles of sodium hydroxide that we add is going to be the concentration times the volume of the sodium hydroxide. And because this isn't going to change to uh, get to the end of the titration, if we increase the concentration by five times, we're only going to need to add a fifth of the volume. So we're going to have less volume, you know. So we're getting more sodium hydroxide with every drop. We're going to need less volume. And this is the way that we usually talk about this. But in reality, when we do it, what's going to happen is you're going to have the moles of sodium hydroxide that you want. Plus, you're going to have some kind of error, right? You're going to, like, over or under titrate by some little amount, okay? And so what you really wind up getting is the concentration times the volume plus the concentration times some error in the volume that you have, right? Because you didn't add just the right amount. And we can't, can do some things to try and minimize this uh, volume error. Like we can titrate it really carefully, but assuming that we've done everything we can to minimize this, we can minimize this whole term, which is your the whole error in moles, by having a smaller concentration. And we can actually see that uh, when we start to think about our significant figure convention, right? Like, if the volume that we needed to add to get to the end of the concentration... Um, to the end of the titration divided by five because we're five times strong or more concentrated at this point if that is less than 10 milliliters then we actually have lost a whole significant figure right we're so in summary here we wind up uh having a more reliable uh titration when we use more dilute solutions with lower concentration